Hello and welcome back everyone. So today I thought I would talk about tourniquets and tell you some things which most people on YouTube would surely tourniquets don't talk about. So firstly, placement. Placement in the military, as we have heard many a times, is high and tight. High and tight is okay for a combative situation, right? High and tight means that you put the tourniquet as high on the limb as you can, as tight as you can. The other option is to put it two to three inches above the point of bleeding until the bleeding stops. These are two very different philosophies when it comes to tourniquets, especially windless tourniquets, right? Putting it as high as you can, of course, increases the amount of leg or arm you might lose. Putting it as tight as you can increases tissue damage and nerve damage and the risk of losing that limb. Putting it two to three inches above the point of bleeding until the bleeding stops reduces the amount of the leg which is being occluded by the tourniquet and it also decreases the amount of tension put on it. Quick mention about elastic tourniquets, especially narrow elastic tourniquets. This is a RAS, this is a original Russian S mark and that is a new model S mark Alpha. And that's an S mark bandage as well, but that's a SWAT T. Elastic tourniquets is really hard to gauge. The thinner ones pose a risk and they are more dangerous than a windless tourniquet for the simple reason that they are thinner, firstly. Secondly, they are elastic, so there is no real way to know how much tension you put on the limb until you have put the tourniquet on it. Um, you might put way too much tension, or you might put exactly the right amount. With these, we can see when we have put adequate amount of tension, pressure. With these, we can't, so over-tightening and wrapping a tourniquet wrongly with an elastic, it's, of course, more dangerous than a windless tourniquet where we can see when we have enough tension. So, moving on, the reason why we put it um, two to three inches above the wound is that if we have a severed artery, the artery might retract into the limb. But, of course, we want to expose the limb both around the wound and above it, okay? The reason we want to do that is to see if we put it high enough. If we do not put it high enough and the artery is retracted, let's say more than two inches, and you have a bad day, right? It keeps on bleeding internally now. How do we see that? Well, we look for signs of internal bleeding, bluing, swelling above the tourniquet, right? And then of course you need to apply a tourniquet higher up because the artery is bleeding internally, right? So that is a real risk, that's something you need to know when you use a tourniquet in the civilian setting. About employing it until the bleeding stops, well, give it 20 minutes, bleeding might start up again, right? Why does that happen? Well, just after a traumatic injury, the muscles in the limb might be extremely tensed up. After a while, as you know, due to blood loss or whatever, those muscles start relaxing again, the, the tension on the artery might not be the same, so with a windless tourniquet you might need to re-tighten it after a while. That's why we need to look at the wound constantly, right? Monitor for bleeding to reoccur. Talking about different types of tourniquets as well, using a SWAT T tourniquet or a Israeli S-mark bandage or just an S mark bandage, right? It's the same thing. Other than the Russians, but yeah, hospital type of S mark bandage, right? Use it in operations to uh, press uh, press blood out of limbs. You know, before you use the pneumatic tourniquet. To employ that on yourself or somebody else, if you are weak, that be due to arthritis, um, small stature, or blood loss exhaustion, whatever it may be, can be really difficult because since it's so wide, the amount of tension you need to pull on it physically to stretch it, the maximum stretch, is much greater than the rat's tourniquet. So you might simply not get enough tension pressure to occlude an arterial bleed using a SWOT tourniquet. 
So that's something you need to know about, right? That's a factor which you need to train, you need to practice, you need to use this word to see if you can physically use it. Especially one-handed application as well on your arm. You use it the same way as you use an S mark, right? You bite it and then you wrap it. But the amount of tension for max stretch on this one is lower because it's more narrow than max stretch on that one because it's so wide. Of course, it's more difficult to grab onto as well, right? So, I think that is all for today. A few points on the tourniquets and risks and, and so on and so forth. So, if you have any questions, please post them below. If you have any um, things to add, maybe I told you something which is completely wrong and you would like to correct me, that is fine as well. Feel free to do that. And, of course, have a great day as usual. Bye-bye.